President Risa Mantaring, President Jerry Plana, fellow PMAPers and MAP members, good afternoon, friends. It is my pleasant task to give you a brief on a new book that is being launched by PMAP today. Our moving train tracks the dynamics of managing the total enterprise, the model for integrating strategy, organization, and people may be likened to a three-car train set. The lead car is strategy. which is chiefly concerned with providing direction. Guided by the vision, mission, and duties of their enterprise, strategy is crafted to ensure enhanced competitiveness and sustained growth. Strategy is presented and discussed in part one of this book. The organization is responsible for transformation. Just like in human anatomy and physiology, an organizational model is crafted as a result of an analysis of structure and functions. Organization is presented and discussed in part two of this book. At the center of the third car, of people is performance. It is vitally affected by training, appraisal, staffing, and reward systems. Here we focus on free-flowing communication, productivity improvement, and creating a wholesome environment for high motivation and high-performance corporate culture. Zooming out into the big picture, do you know that in the recent past, the Nobel Prize has been awarded to two behavioral economists? to Daniel Kahneman in 2002, and to Richard Taylor in 2017. This development prompts us to pay attention to the critical importance of understanding the impact of human behavior in economic decision-making. We need to understand how individual decisions in the microeconomy ultimately shape and transform the global macro economy. According to conventional wisdom, individuals make decisions systematically based on their preferences and available information in a way that changes little over time or in different contexts. Professor Kahneman's empirical findings suggest seemingly irrational wrinkles in behavior. He challenges the assumption of human rationality prevailing in modern economic theory. For example, Professor Kahneman found out that when counting moments of joy and moments of drudgery, bringing up a child turns out to be a rather unpleasant affair. Yet, most parents declare that their children are, they, are their chief source of happiness. We are reminded to be more circumspect before drawing conclusions from observable human behavior. We have a Filipino expression. Tulak ng bibig, kabig ng dibdib. In 2017, the Nobel Prize was given to another behavioral economist 
Richard Taylor. In his best-selling book, he said, it was possible to redirect what could be harmful effects of people's behavior so that this need not adversely affect market behavior. He called attention to three areas. First, the so-called endowment effect created by mental accounting, whereby people value more highly what they own than what they don't own. Second, the social perception of what is fair and unfair can affect the economic decisions that companies make, preventing them from raising prices when demand increases, but not when costs increase. And third, people have problems planning for the long term because they tend to succumb to short-term temptation, as when decision on retirement savings plans or Resolutions to lead healthier lives are often deferred indefinitely. Remember the words of Blaise Pascal, the heart has its reasons, which reason knows nothing of. And what we may ask is the impact of disruptive technology on human behavior and people performance in organizations. Let's look into the findings of social physicists. Social physics uses mathematical tools inspired by physics to understand the behavior of human crowds. It also refers to the analysis of social phenomena with big data. Through the use of digital tools such as sociometric badges embodied in smartphones, researchers in MIT have surfaced a new reality. Factors like intelligence, personality, and skills in individuals matter less in influencing and determining group performance. Instead, it is the pattern of idea flow that accounts for superior performance. Hence, social network incentives are far more important than individual incentives. Considering that today's organizations face disruptive challenges, a shift to team-based approaches and social learning appears to be fully justified. Here's what MIT's Dr. Alex Pentland has to say in his book, Social Physics. In our new hyper-connected world, we witness millions of digital citizens learning from one another and influencing one another's opinions. We can no longer think of ourselves as individuals reaching carefully considered decisions. We must include the dynamic social effects that influence our individual decisions. And these drive economic bubbles, political revolutions, and the internet economy. The final chapter of our book is on managing millennials, which happens to be the topic for this joint meeting. Ryan Jenkins, a millennial and Generation Z inspirational speaker, shares his thoughts. Millennials are not driven by the thought of working hard for the next 40 years and then retiring. Rather, they are driven by the idea of building a life and career that can withstand the continuous reinventions and pivots that their long-term careers in the 21st century will require. I stand before you today on behalf of my co-authors. And let me call two of them who are here. Our first co-author, Ernie Espinosa, a PIMA past president, is indisposed and is unable to join us. May I request my co-authors, Orly Surilla and Noli Payos, to please come up to the center. Please come forward, Noli and Orly, as I will request you to, uh, to do something later. <laughs> Noli is vice president of the ECOP, 
formerly a member of the TESDA Board of Directors as employer sector representative. He was elected president of PIMAP for two terms. Orly Sorilla is a management consultant of international stature. He is a retired partner of SGV Anderson Consulting, now Accenture, and he has handled numerous consulting engagement involving institutional development, organization transformation, and people management projects. He has also served as president of the PMAP Society of Fellows. Please applaud my co-authors. Please stay there for a while. The fourth co-author is a certain person by the name of Sani Coloma. He's currently with Manila Bulletin, was Communication Secretary Benigno S. Aquino III from 2010 to 2016. He's the author or co-author of three books, Diwa, Kapwa, and Pillars of Good Governance. He also served as Pima President. Allow me to end with a reflection. Life is like a train ride. Not everyone will stay on your ride until the final stop. Some hop on, some hop off, some hop back on. Know, believe, and hope that at the end of your ride, your train will have the right passengers on board. And all those that were on board at one time or another were there for a distinct purpose. Enjoy the ride. Thank you and good day. And now, may I request Orly and Nolly <laughs> to kindly uh, join me here. We will present the first copies of the book to the president of MAP, Ms. Risa Mantaring, and to the president of PMAP, Mr. Jerry Plana. Let's all give them a warm round of applause. Go to the center so I can take your pictures. 